So we're going to go over the hypothesis writing practice and I actually wrote this all out in video and then realized the sound was not even on so it was a big waste of my time and we're not going to do that again. So I have the answers revealed that's why I have two copies here and I'll kind of just pull these down as I go through each one. So you get the same gist you just won't see me writing. So if three examples I'm going to go through two of these hypothesis writing there are three versions that we went through general directional and measurable I had mentioned that sometimes students find it easiest to start at directional and then they can make it more general and then make it more specific to a measurable state that's if the observations warrant that it's usually whatever the observations are it's one of the three and then you just got to figure out what are they telling me and then you can kind of fill that one in first so most often in the examples I've seen they give you a directional example like I, you can already see I underlined the word less because that is a direction already in the problem. So it says Mark believes gro groceries at Costco will be less expensive than groceries at Safeway. It doesn't say how much so you know it's not measurable but it also gives you that direction. So the directional is basically a rewording of this information. You don't have to say Mark believes but it's going to be along the lines of the groceries at Costco will be less expensive than groceries at Safeway. So I'll reveal that but I'll talk about how I make the general which is above this. The general is I have to get rid of that word less. So you probably, if did this ahead of time, many students will write something that is very much the framework of the one example we did in our notes. So you will say there is a correlation between the, the cost of groceries at Costco and Safeway. And then you say, oh, I did that right. Unfortunately, that's not the wording. Correlation, if you understand what correlation means, it's a cause effect. One causes the other. And in this case, it doesn't say that groceries at Costco are affecting in any way the groceries at Safeway. Instead, this is what you do. You do a comparison shopping and correlation is not a comparison. So think of a word that talks about what do you say when you're trying to compare two things that are not the same. There you go. You got to reword it and say, oh, that should have been a better word for my general hypothesis. There's a difference in price. There's not a correlation. There is a difference in price and I can test this hypothesis by going to these two stores and observing what the groceries cost between the two if I'm buying the same set of groceries. It obviously wouldn't work if you're going and getting completely different things. That's the premise of this would be that you're buying as a same types of groceries. So there I can then reveal the directional which is a restating. But the big thing here is you have to think is the purpose of this hypothesis going to be to find a correlation or a difference. They're primarily the two words that you're going to input into a hypothesis. So in this case, it is a comparison. The third, you now have to come up with a measurement. And this is one that you would find easy to do. Some students go right for like percentages, but I bet they can't even solve percentages. They wouldn't know what percent it was, unfortunately, because they're just, I, I, you know, it's, it's a tough thing to think about things in, in terms of percents and doing comparison between that. If you can, then by all means do it. But I think that when you're doing a hypothesis, you better be able to prove that hypothesis. You can't write a hypothesis and say, I don't know how to do that. I just want to write that word, that number down. So maybe you say that groceries at Costco cost $5 less. That's probably a little easier for many students to say, I can do that very quickly. Get the same ingredients or groceries and see what the cost difference is between them. I can tell whole number cost difference. So that's why I worded it as such, $5. But now it's $5 less, so it, it incorporates the the number which is required for the measurement in this hypothesis. So you can then say if I did this process it's you would at the end of the the experiment you start ruling if you agree or disagree with the hypotheses. When you're very general again very easy to agree with something. Think of how you write your answers for test questions. When you don't know the answer there is no way you're going to write a specific answer. You want the teacher to think like, oh, maybe they know, maybe I'll be able to get points because I'm just not going to say anything. I'm just going to be very general. That's how the working of a hypothesis would do as well. The second example is with Leslie. And Leslie uh, went out and observed some differences between animal shelters of small and large dogs. I did this strategically where I do not tell you what that rate is. I say they are adopted at different rates. So this then gives you more of a general start. So it might be easier to start this information on the general hypothesis st statement because it doesn't say more or less. There's nothing there. We'll have to come up with a hypothesis when we're writing it. So that's what I have here. 
Small dogs are adopted at different rates compared to large dogs. Again, it's a comparison. You could word these differently. This is not a has to be worded exactly. Maybe you put the word there's a difference in the adoption rates, perfectly fine. But what you do not want to do and why I have these circled is because some students see these words and think those are directions. These are just adjectives to describe the two versions of dogs. This does not tell you what you're measuring in terms of the rate. That's like saying Costco and Safeway. They're just saying small dogs, large dogs. So you wouldn't get rid of, and I've seen many students that would write, there are a difference, there's a different rate of adoption for dogs. That is, I don't have a clue of who I'm comparing. That is not giving enough in the actual hypothesis. So small dogs are adopted at different rates compared to large dogs would be a, an acceptable general hypothesis. Since the word more or less is not there, you have creative ability to pick which one you think. Maybe you have a preconceived notion based on the size of your dog. But I chose small dogs are adopted at higher rates than large dogs. So it's a simple word, higher, gives you that direction, which is what you need. And then from here, think of something that you can measure. Maybe you can measure how many times more. So for every two dogs that or for every two dogs that are adopted that are small, one dog is adopted as large. So you kind of start doing something like that, come up with some way. So there's a lot of different ways to word your measurable hypothesis. Do something that works for you, not for me, for you. So here are three examples of the hypothesis for number two. Um, I'm not going to do the third version. I would like you to do it kind of from start to finish. And then if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask me if you think you want me to check it over, at, show me, and I'll, I'll kind of give you my, my critique. But I hope that with three examples now, one from the notes and now these two, you have a good sense of how to write your hypotheses, which you'll do in your first lab.